Hello guys, in this video I want to continue talking about the risk topology in the fine space and what I'm actually going to show, I'm going to show that uh, let's actually uh, write me things down so we have that k is algebraic a closed field or like just a field uh, an is in a fine space so in other words, it is just a set of n tuples where each uh, separate component uh, comes from your field k also, we have ideal i, uh, which is like uh, generated by some polynomials f, f1, fn, etc. In the future video, we're going to show that uh, when we take the polynomial in n variables, then that ideal actually is going to be finally generated by. So far, we're not going to use the assumption. So then, for that ideal, we can consider a vanishing set. And also, last time we showed that this vanishing set is going to be the same as a vanishing set of each separate polynomial. So the statement that I want to prove is the following. If you're going to consider right now the set of all vanishing sets for any ideals, so in other words, I'm considering the following set, uh, let's call it tau. And last time I show you examples of, in a case when n is equal to three and k is um, real numbers, uh, I show you a couple of examples of uh, what does it mean as a vanishing set. So it's basically, is just some sort of surface uh, which is cut off by some polynomial. So for example, if you have like x is equal to zero, uh, I'm gonna show it again. If you have x is equal to zero in F3, where x is your polynomial F1, then it means you, you have just yz plane because you all points which lies in the yz plane are going to satisfy x is equal to zero because every time when you have point A which belongs here, this point A has component zero. Then the statement that I'm going to show in this video today, that this tau is actually going to be a topology a, a for n, and the topology is called is a risk topology. So first we need to show that empty set and the whole set belongs to uh, tau. So in other words, I want to show that uh, empty set n a n belongs to tau. Then I want to show that, uh, then we can talk about either open or closed, um, subsets of your topology. So in this case, I'm going to talk about closed ones. So for the closed ones, if we're going to take the a finite union of the closed uh, subset, then we again, we're going to get the closed one. So I want to show that zi1 union zin belongs to tau, uh, where each zi, let's call j, belongs to tau. And finally, the last one, uh, if we're going to take like any family of intersection, of my element z i i then it also belongs to tau where uh, each z i i belongs to tau so to show that this is a topology let's just show that these three things holds in the way how we define our z of i so let's first show uh the first let's show that the empty set belongs to tau to show this what i need to show i need to show that i can find some an ideal inside my ring i that the vanishing set of that ideal is an empty set but before that let, let's just mention one thing so if i have the vanishing set of my ideal it's the same as we discuss over here and over here it's going to be the vanishing set of each separate polynomial so in other words i uh, have that vanishing set of polynomials v1 sorry f1 uh, f2 etc so i want to show that I can find polynomials for which the vanishing set is going to be empty. So in other words, I need to find the polynomial which doesn't have any roots because vanishing set basically means that you're gonna plug in the point from the vanishing set and the polynomial is going to be zero. And we have this kind of polynomial. If you're going to ch choose just polynomial to be a constant, or let's be more specific and just choose uh, f1 of x1 and xn to be equal to one then you can easily check and uh, convince yourself that the vanishing set of the constant polynomial, which is the same as the vanishing set of polynomial which is generated by one, but polynomial which is generated by one is basically is going to be the vanishing set of the whole ring. It's going to be an empty set. Okay, using the same approach, we can show that an uh, also is an element of tau. So right now we want to find the polynomial for which every point in your n is going to be a root. 
and as you can guess uh, the choice should be clear that the vanishing set of an is going to be a zero polynomial or in other uh, words it's going to be a zero ideal and here i want to just specify we have something really interesting so we have a huge ring which is k of x1 xn and we have the smallest ring possible which is just a zero ring and once it's inside another one and the zero ring is going to correspond to a huge space which is like your an so something small inside your ring corresponds to something big in your geometry but from other side your huge ring is going to correspond to actual to an empty set which sits in your an so here we can see that we have a strange connection between ideals of your rings and some sort of like surf not like surfaces like subsets of your fine set and we're going to establish this connection deeper in the future videos so so far what we showed uh, we showed our first uh, axiom so let's show the second one so for the second axiom i uh, i claim that it's just enough to show that z of f union z of g is going to be equal to of z of f times g so let's first show this one to see that this is true we need just to check that if you take some point a which either belongs to left hand side or right hand side then we can see that if you have f of g a equal to zero then we have f of a times g of a is equal to zero so from here we'll follow either that f of a or g of a is equal to zero so if you're going to take point from the right hand side then you will get that this is true so from there you will get that f of a is equal to g of a so from here you will get that either f of a is equal to zero or g of a is equal to zero in the first case you will get that point a belongs to z of f or in the second case you will get that your point a belongs to z of g so that's why we have that right hand side is a subset of left hand side to show the opposite inclusion that left hand side is a subset of the right hand side you can see that when you take the point which belongs to the union of two uh, vanishing sets it means your point either belongs to the first one or to the second one so you have either your f of a is equal to zero or g of a is equal to zero but uh, for both of the cases you will get that f of a times g of a is equal to zero or in other words f of g of a is equal to zero so your point will belong to the right hand side so that's why we have that uh, union of two vanishing set is going to be a vanishing set itself so right now using the same idea we can show the following that if you have z of s1 union z of s2 then this is going to be equal z of s1 times s2 where s1 is going to be a set of polynomials f1 uh, f2 and uh, etc and s2 is going to be a set of polynomials g1 g2 and etc and what is s1 times s2 it's going to be consist of the polynomials uh, of the form f i times g j where i and j runs for those indices over here so first we can observe the left hand side is going to be a subset of the right hand side because every time when you take the point which belongs either to z of s1 or z of s2 it means all fi's or all gi's are going to be zero so from there we'll follow that each term over here is going to be zero so that's why that point is going to belong to the right hand side to show that the right hand side belongs to the left hand side what i'm going to do i'm going to take point a here and I will assume that my point A doesn't belong to the first set. So that's what I want to show. I want to show that my point is going to be belong to the second set. But what does it mean that my point doesn't belong to the first one? It means I can find some polynomial, let's say um, f of 1. And f of 1 of A is not going to be equal to 0. Because if point A doesn't belong to your vanishing set, it means that point doesn't make one of the polynomial to be equal to zero so i choose this polynomial to be f1 but in that case since a belongs to the right hand side and i have that f1 times any polynomials of g must be equal to zero and since 
f1 is not equal to 0, it means all gi's are going to be equal to 0. So from here we'll follow that a1 doesn't belong to the first vanishing set, but it will, it's going to belong to the second vanishing set. So that's why right-hand side is going to be a subset of the left-hand side. You can see that every time you take the finite union uh, of vanishing set, you will still going to get the vanishing set, so the second axiom is proved. But finally, let's show uh, the last one. So the same idea, we, the same idea we can apply uh, for the third axiom. So we let's start with the most simplest case. The most simplest case, you take the vanishing set of f, you intersect with the vanishing set of g, and we want to show that if you will take uh, the intersection, the intersection of the two vanishing set is the same as the vanishing set of f union g. So. Let's show that left hand side actually belongs to the right hand side. What I'm going to do, I'm going to take point A which belongs here. So from here we'll follow that point A belongs to Z of F and A belongs to Z of G. So from here follows that F of A is equal to zero and G of A is equal to zero. But if F of A is equal to zero and G of F A equals to zero, it means that A is going to be belong to the vanishing set of F and G. So from here follow that A belong to Z of F union G. Why? Because again, like A satisfies both of those uh, equations. And then we can move backwards. We can start that A belongs to a vanishing set of F and G. So what does it mean? That F of A is equal to zero and F of G is equal to zero. Oh, sorry, G of A is equal to zero. But if f of a is equal to 0 and g of a is equal to 0, then it means a belongs to the vanishing set of f and the vanishing set of g. So in other words, a belongs to the intersection. So right-hand side belongs to the left-hand side. And then finally in here bubble, I'm going to put the statement that is going to be left as, left as an exercise. It's to show that z of s1 intersection z of s2 is going to be equal to z of s1 union s2. So again, we can see that intersection of the vanishing set uh, is going to be equal to the vanishing set. And we proved the third axiom. So let's let me summarize what we have done. Uh, we defined a topology of an affine space, which is called the risk topology, by using closed sets, which are given by the vanishing set of some polynomials. And we showed that uh, to the topology, the empty set uh, and the whole fine space belongs. Also, you're going, if you're going to take a finite union of vanishing sets of your n, you again is going to get a vanishing set. Uh, this is like axiom 2. And if you're going to take an arbitrary intersection of uh, your vanishing sets, you again, uh, you again is going to get a vanishing set. So to go from uh, two intersection to union, as I did in this video, you can easily uh, generalize this to a finite union or infinite uh, arbitrary intersection. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions about this video. And uh, yeah, that's it, we're done for today. So again, like, uh, thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Uh, in the next video, I'm probably gonna do some examples and uh, move on to some other cool stuff. So again, guys, thank you for watching. Have a nice day, bye.